So we're going to continue our chapter 6 example using the perpetual inventory method by going through the LIFO cost assumption. So we're actually going to start with the same process, but now we're going to pull from the bottom anytime there's a sale. So we're going to set up the same template with four columns. We're going to stick our purchases in and our sales in. And now uh, we can uh, also include our running totals. Uh, so at this point, when we make our first sale, everything is the same. Uh, we have five units available. But when deciding what to do for the November 3rd sale, now we're using last in first out. So the sales are the new stuff. So the sale of these two units are actually part of that $11 lot because those are the newest items available, meaning that once that sale is complete, we still have the old stuff, the two units that were purchased for $10 a piece, and now we only have one unit worth $11. We can continue on and now stack the purchase made on 11.7. So we still have those two units worth $10 a piece. We still have that one unit worth $11. And now we have an additional three units that are worth $12 a piece. And so finally, when we make a sale on November 7th, we again pull from the bottom, taking the, one of the newest lots, which is the $12 a unit section. And so uh, we say that that sale is part of the $12 lot, meaning that at this point we still have that old stuff remaining. We still have that unit worth $11 a piece. And now we only have two of those units that are worth $12 a piece. So overall, we still sold three units, but those cost us a total, in this case, of $34. Uh, we still have five units left. But now, two of those were $10 a piece for a total of 20. One of those was $11 for a total of 11. And two of those units were now $12 a piece for a total of 24, meaning that ending inventory is now equal to $55. So what about the periodic method? So again, we're actually going to use a fairly similar method. We're going to create a table with four columns, but we're actually only going to worry about having a line item for each purchase because we don't need to keep as detailed uh, records about our items. So I'm actually going to put in the three purchases that we made during the period and then apply FIFO or LIFO. So starting with FIFO, uh, we know that we sold three items, and so we just, again, pull from the top and say that first off, we would sell the old stuff, these two items at $10 a piece, and then we would have sold one of these $11 items, uh, meaning that at this point, our balance is uh, two of those $11 items, and then when we make our additional purchase on 11.7, we still have those two $11 items, but we also have these additional three items that are worth $12 a piece. And so we say that in total, under FIFO, we sold three units, and those had cost us $31. And that means that we have five units left, uh, two of which were $11 and three of which were $12 for a total ending inventory of $58. Now moving on to LIFO, we're going to start with the same structure, but say that now we're going to pull from the bottom. And so for the month, we made these eight purchases, but we can assume that all three sales are just the newest three items. So our sales are going to be uh, three units at $12 a pop, meaning we still have those two units at $10 a piece and these three units at $11 a piece. And so we sold three uh, costing $36. We have five left, two at 10 3 at 11 for a total. 
So to finish up the LIFO cost assumption under the periodic method, uh, we're left with uh, ending inventory, uh, in this case, uh, $53. So I just want to go through a couple observations um, using our four examples here. First off, uh, note that when we take a look at our purchases, prices are increasing. And so you should note that uh, regardless of whether you're using perpetual or periodic, uh, because we have rising prices, the last in first out method is going to actually involve um, more costly units being sold, um, which reduces the amount of env ending inventory left over. Uh, and because the most costly units are actually assumed to be sold, then you have a higher expense through cost of goods sold on your income statement and that reduces uh, net income overall. Now that's a good thing uh, if you're thinking about taxes because it means that you would end up paying uh, lower taxes but it's a bad thing in terms of, of actual net income. And one last observation, note that under uh, FIFO it doesn't matter whether you use the perpetual inventory method or the periodic inventory method, you actually end up with the same exact answer. So hopefully this ended up uh, providing you with a little bit of extra help uh, regarding these inventory problems for Chapter 6.